Alright, now that we have finished discussing the series connection, it's time to move on to the parallel connection, which this video is going to be about. A parallel connection exists if all resistors in the circuit are connected to the wires or to the rails that directly lead to the positive and to the negative pole of the source voltage. In this example, we have four resistors, R1, R2, R3 and R4. We could have more if we needed to. And all of these resistors are connected to the wires that are directly connected to the source voltage, US. And in this regard, it is important to know that each resistor in a parallel connection has the same source voltage applied to it. And again, that's simply because each resistor is more or less directly connected to the source voltage. And in this regard, each resistor is also subject to Ohm's law, whereby the current is the ratio of the voltage, which is constant for each resistor, and the resistance of each individual resistor. Now, to compute the current flowing through each individual resistor, you have to divide the source voltage, US, by the respective resistance. So for I1, it would be US divided by R1. The same thing is done for the other resistors. And it was the case in the previous two videos, we're gonna first outline the general scheme of the loss in a parallel connection, and in the next video, we're gonna perform mathematical calculations. Now, the total current is simply the sum of all individual currents. And that's because if you have four different currents flowing through each resistor, it must be true that the sum of these currents is the current that is drawn from the voltage source. So I taught the, to the total current is therefore equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4. And the total current is basically the current that is drawn from the voltage source. Now, as you can remember, hopefully, for a series connection, the total resistance or the equivalent resistance is the sum of all individual resistors or of, the, of all individual resistances. In a parallel connection, it's a bit different. For a parallel connection, the total resistance or the equivalent resistance is equal to the inverse, let me write down, to the inverse of the sum of the inverses of each single resistance. Now that sounds a little complicated. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to replace that statement by 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over, uh, sorry, R4 and so forth. So that's how you compute the total or the equivalent resistance in the parallel connection. By the way, don't confuse this formula, which has a lot of inverses, don't confuse this formula with the following formula, which is expressed a little differently, but mathematically it gives us the same result. In some other liter literature, you will find this formula, 
1 over r dot r total is equal to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 r3 and, and so forth so pay attention to whether you use this equation or this equation they yield the same result if you apply them correctly but just pay attention to the fact that you have some more inverses in this equation now the difference is the only difference is that this equation gives you the resistance directly whereas in this equation after you have summed up the inverses of each individual resistance you have to take the inverse of the result itself to obtain your total resistance and if you look at this formula you will realize that the total resistance in a parallel connection is always smaller than the lowest individual resistance so if you have any uh, initial resistance let's say 100 ohms and you add another resistor in a parallel connection it will be the case that the total resistance will be lower than 100 ohms so as I said remember that in a parallel connection the lowest resistance or the total resistance in a parallel connection is always smaller than the lowest individual resistance with that said, let's brace for some numbers that we're going to work with in the next video and where we're going to calculate some variables.